Continuing on Mystics Media Day with Brittany Sykes. The Q's is in the house. We sure. absolutely love to see it. Um, and actually, I, I do want to start off with some, some Syracuse-centric okay. uh, stuff. You were a CRS major? I was a CRS major. Communication and rhetorical well, studies. studies. yeah. That was my minor. VPA, uh, VPA. <laughs> uh, what, what was uh, your favorite CRS class that you remember? Oh, Dr. Grimes. Dr. Grimes, it was a, uh, what is it, meditation? They had Intro, a meditation my, mindful, They had mindful meditation, yeah. I don't think they had that when I was there. No, they had it. I, I very much wish they had. And guess who I took the class with? Who was that? Devendorf. Oh. <laughs> Devo could have definitely used some meditation at times. Now, college. see, yeah, it's never better late than never. Yeah. Yeah, no, but me and me and uh, Eric Devendorf, we were in, uh, we, we took it during the summer, during the summer session. Okay. Um, but it was uh, a summer session meditation class sounds pretty great it sounds as great as it sounds <laughs> it was literally it was like it was maybe me and maybe two of the men's basketball including devo and then the rest were football players <laughs> so sounds pretty sounds about accurate right. yeah, <laughs> at summers. Q, Q yeah. summers yeah um i had a public speaking class and i think i was the only person in the class who actually like somewhat enjoyed public speaking i actually really loved that class too yeah and i used to and i had it at uh i think i had like eight twenty. Mm. But we, um, I would sometimes like use the excuse like, "Oh, we gotta leave for a game, yeah. so I can go first. Mm. And I'm not sitting next through everyone else. Yeah, first. and then the first person usually gets a little bit better grade because you went first. Mm. So I yeah. learned that little little tip. That's Anybody listening right now? I'm just letting you know if you're taking All public the speaking, kids listening that go are first. In CRS or go first. Minoring, <laughs> just taking a random class yeah. over there. Um, I do remember that class. The the. Now I feel terrible because I don't remember the professor's mm -hmm. name. It's because I'm old. I don't remember and, mine, so you're uh, right. <laughs> it's a long time ago at this point. But she was a huge, huge sports fan. Yeah. And I had interned at ESPN that summer. And, like, she was a huge Colin Cowherd fan who was there mm -hmm. at the time. And so she would just let me, like, kind of, like, watch – you know, games or whatever in class. Like there was a day, a night that like the men's team was yeah. playing or whatever, and she'd be like, "Hey, Craig, what's the score?" Like in the middle of class. In the middle of class. Oh no, she's go she's goaded. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> she's goaded. What, what more do you want? I don't know that the academic side of Syracuse loves the first part of this interview, but that's frankly. Okay. I hope. I hope the teacher was Dr. Grimes because uh, she's been there for a while. Has she? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I but I love like her. A, I think it was an adjunct. <sighs> um, yeah. Well, shout out to Dr. Grimes. Shout out to Dr. Grimes. Shout out to to the academic side of Syracuse University, EPA which we took University. very, very seriously. Yes, we did. Um, uh, on the court, uh, obviously, great career at Syracuse, but interrupted by the injuries. Yep. And I saw a quote from you, actually, from an old Syracuse.com story, mm -hmm. where you said that tearing your ACL saved you. Most definitely. What do you mean by that? Um, it just saved my career. I feel like um, the path that I was going on, I would have had a short-lived career. It would have been one of those... Um, Man, she was so good, but she just couldn't get it together. Man, she was so good, and she just didn't get it. I think having those two ACLs back-to-back, -back, the way it happened, it, it allowed me to just sit down and realize that life was not just about basketball, right? And then for me, the biggest saving component was um, being able to understand that basketball is so much more than just the physical, yeah, uh, you know, like I was able to find a therapist and um, talk to him about what the hell I was going through on and off the court. And people don't realize how much that part of your life impedes on your 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 professional career or your just your collegiate career, whatever career, your your athletic career. Yeah, what I can say it goes well beyond. It goes well beyond. You know, too. it goes well beyond athletics. Just life period. You just want to have that mental you know, strength and that emotional strength to be able to get through whatever feat we go through. And for me, it was my ACL tears to the begin with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're obviously known as one of the best defenders uh, in, in the W. Yeah. It's you know, always been a calling card for you. Um, and we hear about defense all the time that, like, it's an it's about effort. And it's mm -hmm. kind of this glorified thing. And I'm not saying that people who are great <laughs> defenders don't try hard. Yeah. But I'm curious if you agree with – uh, like I'm gonna put a thesis out. All right, you, let's hear it. Let's I don't hear know it. if that's a CRS thing or not. Uh, but if if more players took more pride defensively, mm -hmm. there would be more great defenders. True or false? True. You think so? I think so. Because here's my thing. There's a very small group of great defenders, right? Because great, we're talking about you are excelling in all aspects. Um, but then. You know, it, it comes to a point where it's like, all right, are you just going to be 
prideful in how you move your feet on the court? Like, are you going to be a uh, defensive liability? Like, you can't be an offensive great and then you just lack defense, right? Right. Because it takes away from the game. Um, so, for me, it's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, if you just take a little bit more pride and a little more effort, everybody can't be an athletic juggernaut. Right. But you can be really damn great at help defense. You can be really great at come like helping off the ball. You can be really good at directing the flow of the pick and roll to the corner. Like you could do that. All that stuff is intangible that people could do. Yeah. The athletic stuff and all that, like, you know, hey, you either born with it or you're not. <laughs> like, right. So so that was kind of my my I guess counter. Like I definitely think obviously if you try harder at something, you're probably you're gonna going get to be better, better, yeah. At it. But I think one, like lateral quickness mm -hmm. is a huge thing. And there are players that are super jittery, like on the ball, great moving forward, crap side to side. Yeah. It's just they're not very good at it. But I also do think that something that's underrated about great defenders is the mental side of it. Yeah. Just like you said, like the ability to understand space. And some of that, I think it's chalked up sometimes to like effort and you mm -hmm. take pride in it versus like, no, she's really gifted at that. Yeah, no, like it's an IQ thing. Yeah. Like it's not just athletic ability and just being able to get out there and steal a ball. You got to be able to think the game and know when that ball is coming, right? Or I got to be able to think how the point guard on the other team is probably thinking. You got to learn some deception too. Mm. You know, like be a good like to be a good thief, like you got to be pretty deceiving. And for me, it's watching a lot of film, watching yeah. a lot of film, watching uh tendencies of certain players. Um, can't give out too many of my tricks. Yeah. But um, one but of it's the also like a global understanding of the game. Right? Yeah. Like all of that is like, it's one thing to study your opponent and be like, oh, she likes to go left. And like, obviously now we live in this like data analytics <laughs> universe where it's like, yeah. you could probably tell me certain players in the league, they go left 62% of oh, the time. Oh yeah, for like, sure. And for sure. you know, all when they go left 78% of the time, it's a two dribble yeah. pull up. Like no, seriously. We, we have that data now, yeah. but it's also like, what is what are they trying to accomplish as a whole offensively? And then that also is obviously could contribute to your your ability as a team defender as well. Yeah, I mean like literally just thinking now, like one of the one of the things that I'm starting to pick up on and trying to add to my defensive prowess is using the defensive three seconds like mm. to my advantage. Um, I think I haven't really used it to like to my full advantage because offensively Yes, by all means. Yeah. Like, I, I don't, don't think that's something a lot of average fans understand. I, to be honest, like I've been covering basketball for yeah. a long time, and that's something that I didn't really fully appreciate until I think I think I heard Luca talking about mm -hmm. it, or so, an maybe yeah. it was JJ Redick talking about it. because overseas you don't Luka. you don't you don't have a defensive three, so you really have to learn how to score with towers right. so it's inside. Like, I'm timing my drive when the big gotta get out. Lane. Yep, so, like I'm looking at body language yeah. and everything, so it's like as the defender, how, how do, I, do I deceive you to think? Oh, I'm leaving. I'm really not leaving. Like, I'm tagging, you know, I'm looking. There's this rule, you know, to stay in the paint that we can get into, right? But yeah. the overall is, like, you only got three seconds to make that decision. And like Luke was said, like, yeah, I'm waiting for that defender to literally leave and cleanse right. so I can drive to the basket. So it's like, how as a defender can I, like, disrupt your shot? Even if I know you're using that against me, how can I counteract that? Right. Yeah. Oh, I can talk. <laughs> I love this stuff. It's so good. It's so good. Um Offensively last year, yep. big leap for you. Career high, 35% uh, from three. You also played in 40 games uh, for the first time. Love to see that. Um, did you refine your routine at all last off season, or mm. was it good luck? Was it an accumulation of work over the years? Like, what do you attribute last season's success to? Oh, man, a couple things, right? Uh, off the top of my head, just being in an environment that allowed me to flourish the way I did right have the confidence have the support from you know my teammates the staff you know down to back from free agency and then um shout out to coach Ashley coach Ashley McGee she really really locked in with me about footwork balance and mm. I already could shoot the three like coming out of college I was shooting three really well I think like 40 something percent and um I just kind of lost that confidence and coach Ashley helped me find that confidence again and even coach T and, and and coach Eric telling me during free agency we know you can shoot the ball really well you just have to get reps up you gotta you gotta re relearn how mm -hmm. to shoot that ball with confidence and I did I took that challenge and I came in last year and me and coach Ashley got in did some balance things just working on really staying centered getting the ball up where I'm supposed to get it and just releasing it at its highest point and uh it's shown now like I'm shooting them off the dribble now it's just been a 
a collective effort from everybody to really, really help me propel my shot to where it is now. Love it. I love it. Um, how is camp different for you this year compared <sighs> to last year? <laughs> Man, camp this year than last year, for one, I had hella rest. <laughs> I had a lot of rest going into... <laughs> had a lot of rest going into uh, this season. And then from last year to this year, uh, it's very, very evident that I am a veteran. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very evident. Like, it is blaring that I am a veteran, that I am looked upon as one of the leaders, not only in the basketball aspect, but the... Um, what is it? Uh, the, the, like the know. locker room leadership? No, no, yeah, but just like talking. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm not really a talker. Like mm. I am, but not like in the sense of, yeah, like leadership. a vocal. There we go. Voc yeah. Like a vocal leader and like really, really stepping in when I need to. So um, it's been it's been interesting. <laughs> How, do you like it? No, it's fun. No, yeah. it's fun. I, I welcome the challenge. I'm the type of person who's like, I, I know that the only way I'm going to be able to grow is if I'm uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable as hell yeah. <laughs> talking all the time, but it also helps me to stay on my stuff and just make sure that what I'm saying and I'm also doing, I don't want to preach and right. like, um, you know what I mean? So it, yeah. it keeps a magnifying glass on myself. Like I, I make sure I stay self-aware of what it is I'm saying and how I'm moving because I know that the team is looking to me for some answers sometimes it's it's an accountability that's totally different like and it's no one has to hold you you're just like nope oh it's me oh it's right. me yeah, yeah I gotta, uh, oh okay. I, I, I gotta wanna... tell you you did something wrong god yeah. i was like i love telling you do things right yeah <laughs> right definitely all right wrapping up with a couple of quick hitters here. all right uh your favorite vacation that you've ever been on my only vacation i've ever been on was recently to cancun <laughs> okay yeah that's, that's a pretty good one yeah uh, what wh when you go on your next vacation uh if you could just all expenses paid be sent somewhere where would you want to go uh mallorca Spain. Wow, that's a great call. Yes, sir. Uh, your go-to coffee order? Uh, um, flat white. Flat white? Flat okay. white. Uh, teammate you trust the most to drive on a road trip? Ariel Atkins. Okay. Uh, teammate you trust the least to drive on a road trip? Woo! <laughs> uh, man. I'm going to just play with her, Maisha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's the best and worst on the ox in the locker room? Oh, yeah. Best? I'm going to say locker room slash weight room. Yeah. We have, have had yeah. some different yeah. vibes. Well, I know who not to go in the weight room with. Okay. Because I'm not listening to any of their music. Okay. Queen. <laughs> okay. Queen's caught a lot of strays today. Yeah, Queen. Queen. Mostly um, on the driving, but now she's got, actually, she's also caught some I've never been in a car with her, and I know not to. Okay. All <laughs> um, right. Queen, uh, Maisha's up there because all she listens to is Rod Wave. <laughs> <laughs> not having it. <laughs> uh, on the Ox, me, Tori, mm -hmm. Shakira. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'd say those three. It's and funny how people have bundled themselves together on the best and the worst. Yeah. Because the, the similarities definitely come, come out. Yeah, no, uh, you're starting to see a little theme, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. all right. And then last but not least, uh, any NBA Finals uh, predictions? Celtics. Celtics? Bam. Got it. <laughs>